Hi, my name is David Wilkes and I'm your independent candidate for the seat of Ford in the upcoming July 2nd federal election. In this video I want to talk to you about foreign ownership. I want to talk to you about foreign ownership at three different levels. Residential real estate where foreigners own homes in Australia. Rural or farmland where foreigners buy, own, operate our rural properties. And finally, the third, I want to talk to you about foreign ownership of our resources. Taking the easy one first, residential real estate. There are many countries in the world, many, who do not allow foreigners to own any assets, and especially not real estate. For example, if you go to China and you try to buy real estate up there, you can't. If you go to India and you try and buy real estate there, unless you have an Indian heritage, you can't own real estate there either. Right? There are many, many countries that have that rule. And yet we allow foreign ownership of our residential land. Now, is it all bad? Not necessarily, because foreign owners usually put their properties into the rental pool. In other words, they look for tenants to help, help pay for the properties. But some owners, some foreign owners, hold the properties empty. They're looking for long-term capital gain. That doesn't benefit anyone, apart from perhaps the foreign owner in the long haul. Yes, we'll build the house so there is some employment there, but overall, is the economic benefit particularly great to Australia? I'm not opposed so much to foreign ownership of residential real estate, but I think it's something that we need to consider. And perhaps on a purely equitable basis, Perhaps we should only allow foreign ownership of our residential real estate by nationals of countries who allow us, as Australians, to own real estate in their country. Now, the second level that I want to get to is our farmland. In the news at present, we have the Kidman Cattle Empire, not the largest cattle property in Australia which is currently being purchased by Chinese interests, unless it's overruled again. The challenge, as any Australian knows, is that whilst Australia is a vast continent, our quality farmland is very limited. As soon as you move away from the coast, the land becomes drier. We already have the thinnest topsoil of any country, any continent, and we're the driest continent. So, so much of this country is not productive. When we talk about the Kidman Cattle Empire, we're talking about very low stocking rates. You know, maybe one beast, one, one, one animal in uh, five hectares, because the grazing is so low. It could be 10 hectares. But, I ask you this, if a, far, if a foreign owner buys that property, are they buying it to feed Australia? Or are they buying it in preparation to build an industry that will process the product and ship it to China in this particular case? Our asset, our land, owned by a foreigner to produce food for a foreign market, and where will the profits go? The operating profits from that. With transfer pricing, which would be so simple to do under those circumstances, sell the beef at low prices to China. In China, obviously, inflate the price accordingly and take the profits in China. Will that happen? I can't guarantee it. But what I can guarantee is that the opportunity exists to use our assets, our valuable, finite assets, our rural land, for the benefit of others and not for the benefit of ourselves. Now, Kidman is simply one example. There are many, many, many examples of foreign ownership of our rural land, of our farmland. I say that Australian farmland needs to be protected for Australia for our own interests, not for the interests of others. Our farmers should have the right to grow the product 
and either sell it locally or sell to foreign buyers, but with the profits remaining in Australia. Now the third area that I want to talk about is the resource industry. And I'm going to use a very specific example here, but the example is common amongst a number of miners. A company called Adani, which is an Indian-owned company, an Indian-owned operation, has gained approval to build the Carmichael mine in the Galilee Basin. When they put the proposal to both the federal and the state government, they claimed that the mine would produce 10,000 jobs for Queenslanders. But in an appeal in the court, where local residents, Queenslanders, tried to overturn the decision, Adani admitted that the mine will in fact create 1,464 full-time equivalent positions. Now, what they mean by full-time equivalent is some of the workers may be part-time, but when you add all the hours together, there will be 1,464 jobs created. Now, in return for those 1,464 jobs, what does Australia get? Well, what we get is someone else owning coal, which we may not want to really see dug out of the ground anyway, because that coal belongs to all Australians and it belongs to our children and our children's children as well. So what we get is a lot of coal, millions of tons of it, dug out of the ground, put onto trains a kilometre long. Those trains have two people, two employees on them. It'll go to port, it'll go onto foreign ships, it'll get shipped to foreign markets, and the profits from that will be predominantly generated overseas. Not in Australia, externally. So that we get minimum taxation benefit as a result. Yes, the state does get some royalties, and those royalties are the short-term gain that has convinced the Queensland government, in this case, to approve the mine. But the long-term benefits are very questionable. We end up with a massive hole in the ground and get very little in return for it. So my question to you is, should we be approving foreign ownership of our resources? A deeper question is, should we be digging them up at all? Australia doesn't need the coal. Right? We don't need it. And do we really need the minimal revenue that comes from it. When we talk about the 1,464 jobs, right, out of the total Queensland population, it's not a lot of jobs. Why don't we get smart? Why don't we use the technological expertise that this country has and has always shown with great invention after great invention after great invention, starting with the, jump, the, the stump, stump jump a plough, and it right up to the cochlear implant, all of these wonderful inventions that we've had, why don't we create industries that give permanent employment to Australia? For example, why do we spend $100 million per plane to buy F-35 fighters from America, where all of that, in practical terms, is going to American industry? I was at a meeting last night and someone said to me, someone in the audience asked a question and, and they prefaced their question to the, to the panel by saying, Australia is a country of only 24 million people. We don't have the capacity to get economy of scale. We don't have the capacity to have a manufacturing industry. Well, my response to that was to give the example of Israel. Now, Israel is a country of 8 million people. A third of Australia's population, Australia's population is actually 25 million, not 24, but I didn't correct him last night. Israel is 8 million people. Now, Israel has an aerospace industry that employs 16,000 Israelis, not 1,464, but 16,000. Our aerospace industry employs how many? We have trouble building an ultralight. And it isn't, as I said, from a lack of expertise. All our great engineers, designers and technologists 
are sought by foreign companies to design for them. We have thousands of very clever Australians working overseas for companies like McDonnell Douglas. We need to bring these people back home. We need to start our own aerospace industry. We need to start our own defence industry. We can generate the jobs that are needed without giving away our assets. I want you to think about these things. Now, if I am fortunate enough to get your vote, my stance is clear on both rural property ownership and resource ownership. As I've admitted, I'm less decisive on residential ownership because there are some benefits, there are some costs. But I do feel strongly that at the residential level, we should only allow foreign ownership by those foreign nationals whose own government allows us to own assets in their country. I want to thank you for watching, and I will talk to you again in the next video. Bye for now.